So we connect the switch to pin two. Let's make it red. And what we want to do is basically we start off from the five volts. So I'll connect this to five volts. So you've got five volts and when you close the switch, you want it to run through to pin two. So it just becomes a closed circuit. But whilst it's an open circuit, you, you just basically want to drain the current through a resistor. So let's say, and then we use a resistance of high value to the ground. So we just gonna 10K to it, 10 kilo ohm resistor. What that happens is that actually when you close the circuit, normally um, current flows through the least resistance. So you go through um, PD2. So this is where we work on the code, right? We select test, continue. And what we want to do is add it. We want to define our LED pin so we can define our LED pin. So we say LED, um, constant LED pin is equal to 13. As usual, we normally have the state which read the state of the pin, but we want to set it to low. So the state is to read the state of the switch when it comes in. But if you're working with, let's say, the AVR Studio, the compiler can actually com um, optimize the code, meaning variables you do not use, it can get rid of the compiled version. Now, because the interrupt, serv interrupt service may not actually run until the interrupt happens, what it means is that this state that we're reading the, uh, the switch into may not run at all. So if we do not force it to a certain state, the compiler may compile it out and it wouldn't actually help us because we are not going to call this state from the loop function, neither are we gonna make use of the state in the setup function. So to force the compiler to load the value of this um, variable from memory each time, we declare it as volatile. Volatile informs the compiler that even though you may think we are not gonna use this value, we expect the variable to change at a certain stage of the execution. So we have volatile int state equals zero, right. Now in the setup, we want to initiate the serial monitor. We've got serial, but begin. And we set the baud rate to 9,600. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 goes to pin 13. So pin 13 is connected to the onboard LED. Pin 13 is actually the C bit of the port B. So what we want to do now is to find a way to um, set that pin as an output, right? So if we go to data direction register B, and then we can say equals to or, which is the same as data direction register B, or the bit 0, 0, port 6 equals 1, because that's a uh, pin 6 equals 1, that's an output. And obviously the rest as um, an output. That means you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I need to put a zero at the bottom as well. Right, and we've got, um, so that says um, the pin as an output and we've got port D, port D2 is, so we've got port D, and port D2 is the, that is the switch. So that's where the interrupt is going for. So you go and to move the one, that's or your reference to port D2. And the line, so at this point, obviously we turn on um, the pin two of port D. So basically what we have done is set the pin mode of the LED and the pin mode of 
the switch. Now comes the key then for the external interrupt. So we've got external interrupt control register A because we are using pin 2 and the mode that we want to set is any logic mode. So if you want to set a different mode, you really need to make some changes. So we want to set it to any logic mode, meaning we need to push a 1 to ISC 0, 0. Remember this is or this is the same as writing. Um, so if you take the port D, for example, it is the same as writing um, port D equals port D or this or equal to or equal to, it's like writing plus equal to, right? So we want to push a one to the ISC 00. So that makes sure that we are actually um, using it in any state that it changes to, um, whether down or low or up or the voice. And then for the um, external interrupt mask, what we want to do is unmask that of the int zero. This function simply starts the um, interrupt. So basically, just tell it that we want to use interrupt and it turns it on. So you need to remember the SEI. In our code, we define a very long number. So a long sign long, make it really big. Sum equals zero. And afterwards, we want to get stuck in a forever loop. So we say while well, one, which is a forever loop do something and what we want it to do we want it to get busy so basically print some plus plus and we simply say um, we can actually do um, serial print some so we just say count equals And at the end of that, we've got um, the sum plus plus. We want to do serial print line. So what we have here is we expect it to, when it starts running, it gets in here, and then it will go into a forever loop. Let's see if it will compile for us without any issue. So there is uh, is expecting unsigned. So yep, it just simply counts for us, for us, just stuck in a forever loop during counting. There's no way of getting out of this unless we use a break or something, but let's see if interrupts can actually help. So outside our main function, because this is hardwired, we can call an interrupt service routine and the vector routine that we are looking into is the int zero. So we're looking at the int zero vector. That is the routine that should work once the interrupt happens so on here what we well in, in the interrupt service routine we simply want to print so serial print line and we just say responding to interrupt responding to interrupt um, that ends and then you can actually um, read the state of the switch just toggle it so basically, we toggle the state of the switch. Now that flips the state of the switch, and we simply want to do a digital write. In a digital write, we want to write to the LED pin. And what we want to write is the state because the state would toggle the LED. If it is a one, we run the simulation. Tau. <laughs> Should get a name right. So we start it and then the count, um, back to counting. And you realize there is nowhere in the function that we actually run the interrupt, um, call the interrupt service routine as a, because I've got it to change, respond to other change. So basically, that works. Um, so it's counting. I notice it responds like twice each time it prints it twice. But that basically runs the interrupt for you and has the interrupt created for you. 